All right, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to the November 9th, 2022 Portsmouth Conservation Commission meeting. Um, I will be acting as chair today. Barbara McMillan, our normal chair, is on Zoom. Uh, and she is the only member on Zoom, is that right? That's correct. Okay. Yep. Um, so first on the agenda is the approval of minutes. Anybody have any changes to make on those? Um, yeah. I have, um, in the, um, this is so type, sort of typo. Um, in the first part where it says also present under that heading, and then down it where it's got the 614, um, in bracket time. Um, the last sentence was a quorum was not met until some time came to the meeting, and so I think it should be one, someone came to the meeting. Or sometime into the meeting. Or sometime. Something like that. I don't know if they're talking about until a Until some time came to the meeting. Okay, yeah. we'll take a look. So yeah. it doesn't sort of make sense. So I don't know what it's supposed to be, but. Yeah. Um, then, um, I, I was, <laughs> It's a good thing I was doing, um, since Allison's not here. Um, then there was, um, let's see, page three, the bottom line, um, the buffer plantings at the top of the, could act as a living shoreline or enhance the shoreline. A rev, revet? Revetment. What's, is that a word? Yes. Okay. That's like a. Like a bulkhead. I had yeah. not heard that, so. Like a bulkhead. Or sea wall. Okay. Or sea wall. Yeah. I should have looked it up, sorry. Nope. Um, and um, down on page five, um, at the where it says three, thir or excuse me, thirty nine colon twenty seven in the bracket, Ms. Vicaro, Mr. Gindell, and Chair um, McMillan all talked about the flow. I don't remember m concerned that it wasn't for kayaks, but it, at least make it Ms. Gindell. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I was going to say. Me yeah. I, don't, yeah. I don't care if I'm there uh, and. I trust this versus my memory anyway. So um, those are the only typos I found, but okay. anyway. I didn't see any. Anybody else? Yeah, Ted. Yep. I have a, a few, and <clears throat> they're all on page seven at the very top. Seven, you said? Correct. Okay. And in the third line down, uh, was told there was not enough funding for it and then it should continue in the annual operating budget. Okay. And then in the sixth line down at the end of paragraph two it's it should have another sentence that says currently the city's parks are highly compacted and are not aerated oh i think barbara has barbara's hand is up i believe are you are you done, Ted? You got I have, I have, I have uh, uh, one more. Okay. And that's at the uh, number four. Uh, it should be one million three hundred thousand a year rather than just one million. That's it. Thank you. So you have one raised hand, Barbara. Barbara. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Yep. Oh, great. Because, um, okay, I can't do the camera at the same time. But um, so I think the first one was on the first page. Um, says members absent alternate Mika Court. Um, she wasn't a member at the time. Oh, yeah. She had resigned. And then my other one is on page five, which is more of a question. And I should have checked on this before, but um, one, two, three, fourth paragraph down, Mr. Riker responded, yes, this business, the business technically meets the New Hampshire DES definition of a marina. And I think it doesn't meet is what he meant to say or did say, but I didn't go back to listen to the recording. Yeah. 
You guys still there? Yeah. We'll check on okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm like. Okay. That's it. Thanks, Barbara. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh, hi, Lynn. Do you have any um, comments? Okay. Someone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes from the October meeting with the changes noted previously. Second. Oh. Second. Okay, so roll call vote. Uh, Lynn? Yes. Oh, so I, do I have to do any discussion for this? If you want, but. Any discussion? <laughs> okay, roll call vote. Lynn? Yes. She's shaking the rust all right off. <laughs> Abigail? Yes. Uh, no, Allison. Ted? Yes. Jess? Yes. Barbara? Yes. And the chair votes yes. All right. So next on the agenda is the wetland conditional use permit for 800 McGee Drive. Anyone here to speak to that? Come on up. <laughs> Good afternoon. I, I guess, I mean, I, I, I spoke to a few of you, I guess, already. Um, really wanted just to address any if questions. If you could just tell us your name. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll pull up your application on the screen. Sure. Darren Kenny, uh, applicant for the 800 McGee Drive conditional use permit. Sorry, I'm getting there. Oh, no. There you go. So if you can just describe your project, that'd probably be Yeah. Nice. Uh, so the, the request was um, to essentially put in a, a 10 by 12, uh, just a utility shed in the backyard um, on a, tw a tw 12 by 14 crushed rock base. Uh, the entirety of the project would fall in the, within that buffer. So hence my, <laughs> my request from you folks. Um, but yeah, pretty simple. It's, it's just kind of being placed on top of that crushed rock pad. So, you know, no, you know, maybe two inches of depth or three inches of depth of crushed rock and then the, the shed being placed on top of that. Any questions from commissioners? Yeah. Just curious because we did get to go out to see the site, which yes. was super helpful. And I guess we discussed a couple ways to make it a little less impactful on the wetland. And one was moving it a little closer to the, the driveway, a little further from the wetland. And then the second thing was to thinking about adding some additional vegetation along the wetland itself. And I'm curious if you thought about either of those and whether you I saw actually, any opportunities. I did, well, I mean, moving it forward is a little difficult just because there's the easement for the sewer pipe. But um, I was looking at it today and it, I, I, in the strip of land, so the the property lines are a little askew. <laughs> so if you were to kind of draw a, a triangle, I mean a, a rectangle from that that shed all the way back to the pond, the property line actually falls, so it would be beyond the shed at the pond level. So the vast majority of that land behind it actually is our neighbor's property. Um, the piece that is ours. Probably half of that is already yard, and there is a sliver there that is not, but there's uh, a couple of trees already in that section. Um, realistically, there's probably like a maybe like a six by four foot area that's six feet from that shed that there's nothing in right now. It's just like an ash tree that had died, and there's a stump there. Um, but outside of that, there's really not a lot that's on our property. It's more the abutting neighbor's land. But I mean, I'm happy to put something in that one little spot where the stump is, but there's not a whole lot we have in terms of space behind it that is in the buffer uh, in, in terms of wild vegetation. And you've got kind of like the seating area there too, right? So there's like constraints. Oh, on the, over the on whole, that side? Yeah, yeah sure. the whole stretch. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, well, along there is already, like along that seating area is already the wild, I don't even know what it is. It's a little bit of everything, I guess, at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly cattails, and then there's some sort of um, alder or something that grows in there. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So the answer was basically no, you didn't, no other alterations. I did not make any other alterations. No, I did not. Yeah, go ahead. Um, uh, question for you or anybody else, because I couldn't be at the site visit, um, how, uh, I did go and look from the drive, or the, mm-hmm. from McGee uh, Road, um, how far, so this, this edge that's closest to the street, how far is that from the edge of their driveway with the basketball uh, hoop? Is so, it, so from just, the front of the shed to the, to the, the driveway? Yeah, like what's this? Uh, it would be probably 15 feet, but okay. there's a sewer pipe that goes yeah, through there. Yeah, I had a feeling yeah. since you were yeah. talking about the sewer easement. I just, yeah. uh, from this scale, I was having yeah, trouble a... figuring out quite what was <laughs> what. So, okay, thank you. That's not a problem. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Your property is located very close to the wetlands. Um, uh, m- uh, many folks that come through uh, that uh, want to disturb or put in something like this within the hundred foot uh, would subscribe to using uh, organic land management practices on maintaining their yard and it's pretty simple um, we recommend the uh, uh, it's called NOFA the Northeast uh, Organic Farmers Association has an excellent manual it's really really flexible and we can send it to you and just ask that you follow well, voluntarily follow the best practices as far as the for maintaining the yard or i'm sorry I'm not maintaining sure. your yard you yeah. know what what type of fertilizer you put on oh, i don't that? i don't do <laughs> anything perfect so, <laughs> <laughs> but there are other uh, recommendations in there too about things that you would want to plant native plants things like that okay yeah sure if you want to send that along okay means- thank you questions I have a question yeah Barbara um so for the area that's the seating area in there um we were trying to figure out um technically it's sort of uh, it's in the buffer for sure your your seating area where the you know the fire is and everything and the gravel is kind of something that normally we wouldn't like allow without a permit because you're kind of filling in the buffer area and i don't know if that was there when you got the place the house or not um but i just wanted to it was sort of an awareness kind of thing just Mm -hmm. to let you know that um that's that's not okay and but the other part of it is um we just i don't know if you saw this staff report was about having plantings some native plantings along the edge i know that you've been taking down and all the bittersweet and working on that and um we we're just wondering if you'd be um amicable to do some sort of plantings there native bushes and just to sort of enhance that open area down below there on the buffer the the like beyond where the the seating area is or no closer up so from because the sitting area is definitely um beyond the sitting area i think is all I think it's invasives too, but it's all, you know, a natural buffer there. Um, but coming back between the sitting area on the left and the, your property line, line on the right, um, coming back from where some of the trees are and some of the, um, yeah, that's, you know, behind the shed probably. Yeah, that's the area that's not mine. <laughs> that's, uh, that's our abutting neighbor's property for the most part. Um, there's a, a, a sliver of land that is ours on that the left hand side uh we've got more over there um but that's certainly a bit more wild the bittersweet's been a bit more difficult to manage on that side um but the 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 area behind the shed for the most part is not our property so is there an area that is not um have an understory maybe that on the around the sitting area maybe uh, I mean, to, uh, I mean, to the, if, if you're looking at the pond where that seating area is, the, the left hand side is essentially all kind of you know, overgrown with the bittersweet and trees that are dying at this point. But um, the area in front is uh, it's ferns and I'm not sure some sort of small shrubbery that's that's there. 
and then to the right hand side which would be the area behind the shed is what would be the neighbor's property i, I mean i'm happy to and open to suggestions it's just that there's not a lot of areas over in that area that aren't already kind of left as is or not mine so there's a pathway like a stone pathway yeah that's the drainage from that that was that catches the runoff from that comes down the driveway and uh that's been there i think since the home was built back in the 80s interesting um so i just had one more question so to the left of the stone pathway that's your property right the left of the stone property is the yard yes yeah so in there like you know between the stone and and the sitting area would be great it's all grass that goes down so, to whatever the natural vegetation so it would be great to have some plantings in there i think and i don't know if people might have a better idea that are there in person yeah i mean i i think you you have a small grass area to begin with which i i see your boys out there using it when we were out doing the site walk so i understand you wanting to preserve as much of that as possible um so you're attempting to remove the bittersweet are you plant are you planning on planting anything once that's kind of removed to help you know something else grow there i mean my neighbors and i have been you know it, the bittersweet's been <laughs> quite a project yeah i'm sure um and we're trying to save the trees that are still <laughs> remaining uh there's been a few there's been i think three white pine that have been put in there as well as three spruce yeah uh, in that kind of space between us at behind the shed uh there's also been some um his, his wife is a big fan of butterflies, so we've had some milkweed that's been put down. I don't know if it'll take or not, but yeah. in uh, the space between us in the front, as well as the back, we've, we've had some of that put in as well. Um, but outside of that, there's been no, it's been more of a proactive fight against the, the bittersweet than anything at this point, trying to get that maintained and, and knocked down before making any attempts to, to really put in anything in terms of long-term plans. Okay, but you, that would be the plan ultimately yes, is yes, to put yeah, stuff in there. Yeah. Okay. But it's been, it's yeah, pretty uh, but, voracious. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, one thing I'd say is the one way to stop the bittersweet from growing is to plant things that will shade it out. So if there's other plants growing, you might still have to pull bittersweet as it comes up. But if you have other plants, eventually they'll establish themselves and then the bittersweet won't have sunlight to, to stimulate its growth so that you'd still have to you're always going to have bittersweet coming up it's just a matter of living in Portsmouth really and it's so established along that pond that you're going to have it but if you put if you planted a bed and I think what they're looking for is a bed along the size of the, the shed you're putting in that you could maintain as plantings native plantings in your yard then the hope is that would offset the the size of the shed impact for the buffer and provide some native plantings which provide habitat like the milkweed for butterflies that kind of thing um, so that's what I think that's what they're they're looking for is an area that you're committed to that we would keep as a garden area for, with native plantings I mean we do have around the city I mean there's two or three smaller kind of rock gardens that do get fought over with the butter bittersweet as well that we maintain some plants and whatnot I mean, I'd prefer not to have it in the middle of the yard, which the boys do use. Um, but if, if it can be more, you know, not necessarily a, a, a solid 10 by 14 by 10 space, and it's maybe several smaller spaces, then that certainly could work, you know, around the back area. I can take uh, a section along that um, kind of that drainage area and put a piece there and then put another piece down by the sitting area if, if that would be acceptable. Um, finding a spot that that is, you know, the same size as the shed might be a bit more difficult just because of the way the, the, the land's laid out. There's not a lot of open kind of areas other than in the middle of the yard. Um, and then as I progress on that other side, <laughs> that's, that is a little more wild at this point. Um, you know, the ultimate goal is to just get rid of the bittersweet and have it be a more, you know, um, a more pleasing setting for kind of the, the natural plants as opposed to the the stuff that's killing all the trees yeah i wasn't suggesting it be the same shape it's more the same square footage but, okay but i you know yeah, these sure. guys these guys should make yeah. the call a bunch of small spaces fine okay have you or your neighbors considered blueberries we've tried the blueberries and they've died every single time yeah that's too bad 
<laughs> I was gonna say that could be fun for your boys, yes, we, and that could be we, easy to just. We've we've uh, we've invested in blueberries like five years in a row now. <laughs> oh, oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Any other questions? Someone want to make a motion? I will make a motion to uh, recommend approval for the wetland conditional use permit for 800 McGee Drive. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Oh, with stipulation. the stipulations. To Go follow ahead. NOFA standards. Yes, and to try to consider some native plantings once you get the bittersweet a little bit more manageable. Absolutely. Second? I'll second. Okay. Discussion? I think going to the your property, it, it's tight where to put plantings. I totally get it. And like we saw, your yard is, backyard area is small and you use it. Um, I think removing, trying to remove that bittersweet is awesome. That's a really hard job and I, it's appreciated. Um, and I think what Jess said about, you know, as you can filling in that area with native plantings, I, I think might be the best area to do that. Um, I don't know if anyone else has any ideas about the plantings. I mean, to me, the easiest thing sometimes is to just, you know, right, it goes right now from grass to kind of the cattails and to just kind of cut, you know, move your, your mow line back just a bit, you know, to kind of let those grasses right along the cattail grow a little bit taller. can add a lot of, like, stability to the shoreline there and catch any runoff from the house and improve water quality. You know, there's all sorts of benefits. Um, so it's kind of a, an easy yeah. thing to do. And then a little bit of planting would be great too. Yeah. Yeah, just try to keep stuff as natural as possible and then get rid of the stuff that's not supposed to be there and plant more natural, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. Get the benefit of more wildlife usually yeah. visiting too. So. Okay. Are we ready for a vote? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Lynn? Yes. Abigail? Yes. Ted? Yes. Jess? Yes. Barbara? Yes. And the chair votes yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for your time. Thank you, guys. Good luck with bittersweet. Yeah. <laughs> done that before. Oh, God. <laughs> down every little I don't see the next applicant, but yeah. I think she's here for something else. But I don't know what else she's I mean, here. I'll announce it. Um, all right, next on the agenda is the wetland conditional use permit for 225 Borthwick Avenue. Do we have anyone here to speak to that? I've been trying to zoom in. Is there nobody trying to pop into the Zoom meeting? Oh, there is two people on here. Uh, hi. There we go. There's Brock, Mark, yeah, and hey, Heather. Did you see something on the screen? I, think no uh, I see Brock and Heather. Heather. Are you guys here for the Borthwick? That's correct. Okay. Hi, good afternoon. Heather here. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, we can. We can hear you. Yep. Super. Um, I'll bring up your plan. Just tell me where you want me to go. I'll, uh, sure. Um, I have a, a binder with the delineation and stuff as well. I don't, I don't think that was sent over yet. But um, so this, this is actually a decent place to start. Um, or actually, if you want to go to the aerial, I might give everyone a little bit better um, idea. Where is that back That's, still? Uh, should be a little that right one. there. So um, this obviously it. I, I believe some of you, I wasn't able, I'm actually in Georgia right now, but I, I, I was up here about a year ago. Um, is this, could so you just, sorry, just, sorry, Brock, could you just introduce yourself? I think it's Brock Marks. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, sure I'm, Brock, I'm Brock Marks with the Qualys uh, Stormwater. Um, we're the company that has been working with Liberty Mutual to try to work on stabilizing the shoreline. Um, 
And uh, we additionally have TRC and Heather on the line who, is, who, did, who conducted the uh, wetland delineation um, as a part of the requirements to um, obtain the conditional use permit. Thank you. All right, so, um, yeah, so it, there's some, there's some erosion, um, some loss stabilization, uh, obviously the, the shoreline is existing, the side slopes, uh, they're more of a landscape feature than they are um, any type of buffer or anything that necessarily you'd want against any type of wave action or rise and fall of uh, a pond. Um, and it's, it's <laughs> created some, some sloughing along the, the side slopes. So initially when we were engaged, uh, I believe it was July of 2021, we had started going down the road of doing some more ballistic um, uh, restorative practices for stabilizing the slope, such as what we have proposed, which is using the core log, the stone toe, and establishment of uh, native wetland vegetation. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty small, narrow buffer or narrow area right there at the, uh, the shoreline. So we wouldn't be, our limited disturbance would be about three to four feet away from the, the normal water level. With, that's just, that, that was just, that was client oriented to kind of show something similar. Um, if you go to the plans, it says that the, they were, that it was originally 22.4 um, feet of elevation for the normal water level. I, I believe that just from looking at the aerials, um, it's changed. Uh, you know, or it has risen over the years just with, you know, normal siltation, um, standard loss volume. Um, but I don't know if I'm able to share screen if y'all would like me to. I actually have a drawing or just kind of a markup that might may help. Do you want me to go to a different sheet? Uh, no, no, there, there's, a, I have a markup that um, may, might, might have helped or may show more, but I think this will show, show enough. Um, so as far as our methodology, again, we're gonna put in a uh, stone toe, riprap stone toe, 12 by 12. Um, we would do protection of the outlets or the primary outlet. Um, we would not be impacting, we would be inside of the 100 foot buffer from the lower right corner of the smaller pond um, to the building, moving north west to the building. Um, and the same on the bigger pond and the larger pond, um, right from where the dotted line is, right from where the 50 foot parking setback is, uh, where that line is extending all the way to the, uh, the culvert that goes into the smaller pond. Do you have any more to present or is that, are you ready for questions? Uh, no, so I, I have, I don't know if I'm able to share my screen. Um, I, I, I have a, a pretty, we have the wetland delineation and everything that uh, I'm not sure if um, y'all have that copy or not. Um, I can try, let's see. I... Okay, sorry about that. Oh, there, there you are. Yep. Hmm. So it's, it's pretty, pretty lengthy. Um, Rock, would you like me to review the wetland delineation? That would be great. Thank you, Heather. <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, afternoon, everyone. Heather Strelazzi Ward here, wetland scientist with TRC Companies. Um, so TRC, uh, myself and another um, wetland scientist tech went on site in the early part of September to, to conduct a full delineation. I am a licensed a wetland scientist in the state of New Hampshire, <clears throat> which I know is a requirement to delineate wetlands in New Hampshire. Um, so um, we conducted a full analysis and um, on the property, we identified two wetlands. Um, you know, much of the site is is developed. It's been developed, um, you know, um, for, for many, many years with the Liberty Mutual building on site. Um, most, of, most of the site itself is um, landscaped and lawn area. So we we did identify two wetlands, um, one in the southern portion of the property, 
um, pretty small isolated pocket. Um, it is essentially um, a plostrin emergent wetland with um, um, populated with you know purple loosestrife, cattails, um, and then another wetland area, small polygon to the to the north, kind of closer to I ninety five. Um, maybe you could flip through to um, there's a a good map if you flip down along in the delineation report that might aid kind of this overview discussion of wetlands. There we go. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, super. So the <clears throat> the first wetland that I was describing that's um, characterized by t cattails and purple loosestrife is that WHSW1 down to the south. Um, and then the second wetland, um, WHSW2, is um, closer to I-95 to the northwest. That also is a small isolated pocket. However, that does have two streams that run through it. Um, it is developed up to the edge. Um, you know, with some lawn and pathways and, and other, you know, landscaping. Um, it's quite nice, but, you know, it's been manipulated over the years. Um, it appears that the two streams come in from under underneath um, I-95 and run in a southerly direction through uh, southwesterly, excuse me, southeasterly direction through the wetland and in towards um, water body HSW-1, the larger pond to the south. Um, which is also, we delineated that as a resource and um, did a little looking through aerial maps and it, it appears that that pond has been in place since pre-jurisdiction. So that, that was something we did look into. Um, the second water body is off to the, to the north um, east and that's uh, WBHSW2, smaller pond. Again, you know, appears to be man-made. Um, and that ha does have an outlet um, via culvert that flows to the north. Sorry. Yeah, if you wanna, if you care to flip through and see any photos, I don't know if you're familiar with the site, but um, that in a nutshell is, is um, you know, what we turned up for um, delineation of, of wetlands and water bodies. I think they all have, I, 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 if you want me to go to any photos, I will. I, they have the whole application in front of them. But if you want okay. anybody who might be watching, um, I can go to any photos you want. Do you want me to go to the photos? Yeah, if you want to go to the photos, um, I don't know if you can zoom in, but but this is um, wetland one off to the south, this first one that I described to the south. You can see the purple loose strife and cattails. It's mowed um, basically to the edge. Although we did delineate um, on that second photo to the bottom, they're mowing over the, over the delineated wetland, so, um, some of the wetland is is mowed, which is which is okay. It's it's part of a landscaped area, but um, did just want to point that out that it's, you know, it extends beyond the extents of what is not mowed. It's bigger than than that large, taller vegetation. If you want to flip through to the next page, um, that is um, kind of an overview of of the other wetland, the second one to the northwest, closer to I ninety five, wetland two. It's a little bit more wild, um, a little bit wetter, um, cattails, purple loosestrife, and, and other sedges characterize that site. And this is the one that has the two streams running through it. If you want to flip down to the next page. Um, this really tough to see the streams. They're, they're quite small and, and sort of deep. Um, they're, they're a little bit eroded. They appear to be a little flashy, which is expected in an area that has, you know, um, Quite a bit of development surrounding the area, um, but you know, in 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 fairly good shape. Just hard to see in the photos, but those are the channels there, and those appear to be um, perennial streams. If you flip down to the next page, um, again another photo of the streams, and then you can see that that some of the landscaping has um, bridges and pathways in and and over the um, the delineated streams. So it's a nice area for um, the employees and staff to, to walk about. Now, if you flip through to the next one, um, again, yeah, it just shows more of the developed nature of, of these features, of the stream features. And the next should show um, the two water bodies. So this is the larger water body um, that's to the south of the property that has fountains. And as Brock was saying, it's, you know, it's landscaped with grass 
pretty much to the edge of the open water that um, appears to be a man-made pond. And if you flip down to the next one, um, water body two is shown uh, in, this, in the bottom photo, and that's the smaller pond that's um, to the northeast of the site. And I think that's it for photos. If you have any questions about about the resources, I'm happy to happy to answer. But yeah, again, you can see that um, there is um, quite a bit of nice landscaping around. But um, as Brock noted, there is some, you know, there is some erosion. I believe it's from wind action and just the the nature of the the mowed grass condition up to the edge of the water, um, particularly um, along the eastern side of of the ponds that would really benefit from this shoreline stabilization with the core log and and you know putting some more native plantings in and just you know the the practice of maybe not mowing straight down to the edge of the water so overall um, i would see this as you know benefiting um, the water quality and also the stabilization of the of the edge of the pond Are there any questions about um, delineated resources? Yeah, Jess, I'm not so much uh, sure it's about the resources. I apologize, I couldn't go to the site uh, walk, but I'm just trying to understand, so is the silt sock gonna go like right along that grassy edge? Is that where they're, um, is that where you're gonna put it, Heather? So the, so yeah. we'll, we'll cut the edge back just a, just a little bit, kind of uh, pair it back to um, the, it'll it'll meet up against where the compact fill is. I, I don't know if you can pull up the original um, or the, the scope of work again. Um, and I actually just emailed a, a binder for it. Um, if you want to share your screen, Brock. Um, yeah, oh, am I able to? Okay. You, can, you could, yeah. I think um, I'm right. gonna stop my sharing. Um, All right. I, I think. Got it. I think we can get you going here. All right. So let me, let me rejoin. Let me uh, pull this up for everyone. see yet not yet yeah. oh here it oh, comes it's coming yeah. no, okay all right so excuse me i'll try not to give anyone a whiplash here uh scrolling through okay so all right so this will probably give hopefully give a little bit better and this wasn't on the original one so this is if this area right here where my cursor is is the side slope um on on both ponds and this is the normal water level which is at 22.3 uh design the only thing you'll be able year one you'll be able to see the top of that core log um one possibly two growing seasons it'll hopefully be that that native vegetation will proliferate along that shoreline they will still be able to have some of their landscape features beyond or up the slope, but this will act as a stabilizing agent or a method of stabilization, as well as since that the soil is kind of, it, it's kind of mucky uh, underneath where the, the grass meets, this will act as a reinforcement for the, um, for the, the shoreline, the toe of the slope itself, um, which is, you know, the wave action, wind action that's is causing the erosion it also looks like it might be a little soft underneath, so that is, you know, the repair methodology for um, that we use a lot for this type of erosion. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Other questions? I have one. Um, 
so I don't know if you read the staff memo, but they recommend um, details being provided about the species to be planted and just more information about the maintenance of it so that it survives. Yes. Yes, so the so on and when we initially had done this, we hadn't get, quite gotten that far. But I, so the intent would be to try to mimic some of the species that are surrounding. So I know that um, we had the Heather. You can speak to that part a little bit. But what I had going was with you know more long lines with herbaceous since it doesn't have a a large area right there. There's already some maples and stuff that were that were part of the design. So I had. Swamp milkweed, twin flower, joe pie weed, tussock sedge. Um, if we wanted to put in some multi stem or uh, woody stem vegetation, or shrubs rather, uh, red oyster, dogwood, and button brush. Um, so this would equate to approximately with the wetland plugs, there are about 2,348 plants along this, uh, this vegetative buffer, um, or about six plants per um, yard of, of the, the plugs. So that'll, if we have an 80% you know, um, success rate, they'll still allow for significant proliferation, especially this, uh, the uh, Joe Pye weed, um, to be able to kind of inundate that, that, that buffer and provide a, a good, um, a good, well, a good buffer. Um, <clears throat> so that would be, that was the tentative plan. Um, some of it were hoping to get guidance as far as what, what the board would like as well. This is where we need Allison. Did you say that was in the plan? Yeah, is that in the plan or is um, in writing anywhere? It, it, at the time, it, the proposal that was sent over was six, uh, so in accordance with the New Hampshire um, wetland vegetation, what the, the recommended vegetation, um, we just hadn't specified it at that time. So the document I just sent over does have it. Okay. so. Is that fine then if that's well, then we, going yeah to what we board? asked for in the staff memo was that it be provided before it goes to planning board so if that's your planning board packet and it has the specific plantings that you just described then that's what we'd be looking for okay understood does it have like the spacing and the look like the a planting plan basically uh we do not have a design one but we can provide one um you know it, it would we would try to it, all it has is that we were going to do six per per uh, square yard. Yeah, I think just so we have it, because we, we put a condition in sure. there about the survival, so we'd have to have something to measure against that you provided. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's not a problem. Okay. Barbara? Thank you. Um, so I um, was out at the site too, and uh, well, I had a question first about the geotextile um, what you're using the tr m250 or whatever what it's made out of yes so that would be that is that is going to be a coconut uh, fiber so it's actually you that and that was if we were going to do this in the winter and then plan on planting more in the spring it is more of a temporary stabilization so that you know if it did have any type of disturbance and then it would be uh, tr125 is coconut fiber did you say coconut so fiber plast not in the TRM 25. That would be purely coconut fiber. Yeah, coconut. Did you say TR 250 was not coconut fiber? That is. That would be a temporary stabilization method if we were doing that uh, pre when if we were getting close to the the uh, the uh, first killing frost this season. So. What when are when is your uh, plan to plant? I mean, it would, we would be assuming that this, you know, whenever this would be approved would be the beginning of planting season would be, I, I would assume in April, we would probably, you know, realistically. So then you you probably wouldn't have to use the No, we that doesn't wouldn't. Count. It was just if we were going to do the remediation piece now, you know, prior to the end of the year. But, you know, that, that when that set, was set in motion, it was back in July. So it, it's looking like we're getting a little bit closer to this is a 2023. Okay. Go ahead, Barbara. Sorry. Yeah, more. Good. Thank you. Um, sorry. Uh, so on page five of your application, what we received, there is a drawing there, or a schematic of what the the 
the riprap would be and, and where would the log be? And it seemed pretty similar to what you were showing us. Um, so the riprap toe, it says, is below the waterline? Correct. So are you, so that's kind of filling in along the edge or you're cutting back and then replacing it with that riprap toe? That's correct. So that, that is what, you know, you have downward forces from that slope. So that is what would actually stabilize the slope itself, what the, the um, log would, the toe of the log would rest upon. Okay, so to follow up on that, just, I don't know if you found out whether or not you need to get a wetlands permit, a st state wetlands permit, because you're working below that water line. Um, and I, I guess our question with it is, is it would, is this going to be a piece of, um, it, and I guess this has been our question with this, it, in most areas, I guess it's um, for normal maintenance, erosion maintenance, how would it be repaired normally um, if it was just standardized erosion? And that's not a challenge, it's, it's a legitimate question. So I, I guess that's that's been the entire thing for the client as well as been um, the repair of erosion in, in general as part of the O&M, the operating and maintenance agreement so would that be necessary uh as well to be able to do erosion repairs elsewhere on this pond well the the position of the city is that you're you're putting mm -hmm. fill in a in a wetland so that's why you're here for, Understood. The, for the wetland permit Understood. in terms of the state Understood. in terms of the state um i guess that's not our jurisdiction so we that's why we're asking okay. i think barbara's asking no 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 i understand um yeah so that and that that clarifies a little bit for me so we would be pulling back just just to where the slope would tie into or just back underneath where the water line is uh and so it would be extending out 12 inches or it would be underneath where the the slope kind of ends where the water line is that would be the forward leading edge of the um the rock trenched in it would be in in the soil not necessarily touching the water Okay, we well, appreciate if if you don't mind checking to make sure that you don't need one. Um, thank no. you. No. Um, and I I just had a, a couple of other questions on this. Was Can I just add something um, before you before you go on, Barbara? Just so yeah, um, just so we're all clear, because it will be a it will be a condition of any city permit that you get all state approvals necessary. So. Um, I don't know that we need to make it a stipulation that you have it before the planning board, but I think you do have to follow up with the state and let us know how they responded so we know, you know, when we approve this permit that it's not going to need a state wetland permit or it is going to need a state wetland permit, just so we're clear Understood. in the city. Understood. Okay. That's Thanks, problem. Peter. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so I have more questions, but I, I can wait. Go ahead, Barbara. Um, thank you. Um, so the other thing was you're going to be pumping out water uh, or dewatering the pond. And I was wondering where you're pumping that to and how much you're taking out. So we would lower it enough to be able to, you know, in order to mechanically stabilize it, we would have to lower it just enough to be able to um, actually do that. Um, so that would be approximately 12 inches. We would uh, pump into uh, filter bags, um, which would then cycle back up to the larger pond or vice versa to the lower pond that would be pre-filtered or treated through BMP. Okay. I didn't see the filter bags in there, but um, thank you. And then I just had one more question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, and it has a little bit to do with the maintenance and just overall um, the, uh, I guess it's not a question then, um, so the erosion didn't seem that bad when we were there, um, but it's awesome that you're doing this. So it's something that we've asked the Liberty Mutual to do for a long time is to put some buffers plantings along the edge because that pond uh, is, it, I don't know if it's aerated because it just gets too much nitrogen in there or, or, what, or too much um, phosphorus in there, but that landscaped area around the pond is what's totally killing the pond because it's just, I mean, that's really, really green grass that they maintain all the way down to the water's edge. So uh, 
you know, it would be awesome if they would consider doing more plantings along the edge of the water, not necessarily right down to the water, but but in the buffer, um, you know, not having to stabilize or anything like that. And we were really hoping that uh, somebody from Liberty Mutual would be here, but uh, that would totally be a huge request that we've been asking for a long time because it would also help mitigate the geese, which are contributing to to Absolutely. the problem with the pond and so every time they come for something we ask this and every time it's still the same thing they're maintaining it the same way i'm sure they're using tons of fertilizer along the edge that grass is so green and mowing right down to the water um and my ask would be somehow to get them to do something different here uh, no we can absolutely advise we, we can absolutely advise i mean we're we're we are in the position of um you know, trying to get we, we are conservationists at, at heart so we try to try to meet in the middle so if we can advise to you know make it in accordance we absolutely will that would be great and then i yeah and i, I would just echo the other things that they um everybody else has said about the maintenance and and if it's possible to let that grass grow up between the the core log and the existing um mulched areas that are there there's a lot of grass in between that really just could just grow up or or be seeded with like a you know some sort of mix wetland mix or something like that when you're doing the work um because it, it's just not necessary it totally no. would be awesome so if, that's my request no that's absolutely that's that's absolutely doable um that's yeah our, our overall intent as well so we're we're good with that Thank you. We will advise. Thank A you. Anything else, Barbara? I'm good. Thanks. Ted? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I uh, share Barbara's concerns about the surrounding uh, landscaping and uh, the concerns that where that water flows from those ponds. It goes off site from there as well. So. You know, we're we're adding way too much nitrogen, things of that nature, and flowing in there and then flowing off site. Uh, the the question is, uh, we've asked other applicants and people regularly do, and it would be wonderful if uh, Liberty Mutual could follow the, the standards, the NOFA standards set by the Northeast Organic Farms Association. Just the applicant that was in here just before you on the agenda, same thing. Uh, they happily agreed to uh, follow NOFA standards, and it would be wonderful as part of this application if that were a condition of approval. Understood. Thank you. Yeah, we, we we will advise on this. You know, obviously, I I didn't realize that we didn't have anyone from uh, Liberty Mutual here, but we will uh, definitely advise on. We, we go through the similar things in Durham and all over the rest of the country where we work. So uh, nothing, nothing alarming or new. Lynn? Uh, along those lines, I, you know, I hear you kind of describing yourself as a conservationist. And I guess I'm curious if there are other designs that you considered for this pond, you know, when your client came to you and and said, what should we do? Were there other alternatives that you considered? Yeah, so I mean, the, the, the big thing was, is when we were, when we were looking at it originally, uh, you know, obviously the client was, they had, the first thing we wanted to do was take out the riprap on the other side, which was installed, you know, at some point previous. Um, you know, the, as far as mechanically sound, or mechanically, um, restoring that shoreline from a strictly engineering aspect is the downward slope is is the concern once that toe has been destabilized and i, I think that you know i, I wish i had a, a a better picture to show um it, it's the same exact way that we would do that we do in shorelines uh in stream banks um so yes we we absolutely could just do you know just do the uh remediation with the core log the concern being that there is still the sloughing erosion, the wind action erosion. Now we can do a live fast scene. There, there are multiple other options. And so why did you choose this one? 
Uh, because it was the most stable. Um, also, it, it gives a little bit of time for the plants to uptake. Um, it also goes along with you know some of the federal and, and state guidance uh, for doing this. Mm -hmm. Have you been to the site? I have. Yeah, I mean it's a it's not like a high energy system. I guess that's why I was wondering if there's anything even softer that could be done without having to excavate and add rock. Just you know, it's, it's not mean, a high energy system, so it's not like a you know. I'm sure. I guess I'm, I'm guessing the erosion is just kind of from heavy rain events. Is that? It, it could be. It could. It, it, it could be. Um, I honestly, I think it's from the vegetation, the grass being mowed too close uh, for a long time with with having wind, you know, minor wave action. Yes, the rise and fall, um, and you know, it, no. T in the way, depending on how it was constructed, depending on what the backfill was, if that if it was soft and then just started sloughing over off over the last twenty years, um, you know, the un, under. Um, many other uh, sites we would, you know, still we would lay that grade back a little bit and then restore an actual buffer, an actual area. So, I mean, we're trying to go as, as minimally invasive as possible. And that, that was kind of what just kind of the conclusion we came to is that 12 by 12, while also having the most stability. Right. Yeah, that was my instinct too, was just to like, ease the slope a little bit, make it a little more gradual slope, and then it wouldn't be such a spot for erosion? Correct. Yep. And, it, and so that was, I mean, we, we're all for uh, doing that as well. So, I mean, it, it, I mean, really, that that's the one that I think it's the, the larger pond has a little bit steeper slope. The smaller one um, is not as severe. Um, and that, you know, that would, you know, definitely be an option on the larger pond would do but we were kind of figuring that the destabilization or the exposing of more soil or the more, you know less more vegetation that we disturb that more you know turbidity that or you know suspended solids are potentially in our system hmm. okay so is there anything else you'd like us to recommend to the client <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right, I'm all for, um, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm all for, you know, the, the, it, it's, it would be ideal if, like you said, we could, we could get rid of some of the, the landscape type vegetation, the grass, you know, obviously get to more of a, a BMP style, uh, or what we call a BMP style or, you know, more of a, a <laughs> maintaining it like a pond as opposed to uh, a water feature. Um, you know, would be ideal. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, that would be kind of the biggest, the biggest thing if we could get rid of some of the, the existing plant. I, I can't remember how, what type of trees it had. I'll have to look. But um, yeah, if we could just turn into a buffer area, would be ideal. Okay, it sounds like that's kind of along our thinking too. I'll, I'll stop my yeah. questioning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, Jess. Uh, along those lands, Brock, I know at one point when Heather was telling us about the two wetlands on the property, she said that one of them, actually currently part of it, gets mowed over. Have you had any conversations or recommendations? I can't think that we are, to... <laughs> we are strictly the, uh, we do not maintain the site, and it, this is not a cop out. We are 100% engaged as we are more than happy to, uh, consult and maintain the site. Uh, I believe they have a landscaping company. Okay, um, so your focus has really purely... been on the pond and nothing beyond that? Or the no, pond. this is just the shoreline of the pond. We are not touching anything outside. Our limited disturbance is going to be okay. very confined to that one area. Okay, thank you. No problem. Any other questions? Someone want to make a motion? I'll get it started. I might need some help. Um, I will make a motion to recommend approval of the wetland conditional use permit for 225 Borthwick with the following stipulations or recommendations. I don't what. 
stipulations. Stipulations? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I would stipulate that they no longer mow over a wetland. <laughs> that would Second be my that. first. <laughs> yes. I don't know what the proper. Uh, or recommend to their. Yeah, to or they consult with their, their landscapers. That yeah. they, like, it, what can you do with that? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, I guess I'm wondering. I mean, it's. The problem is it's a wetland that's not in your jurisdiction because it's not size so you can recommend oh. it but I don't think you can require it okay. if it was in a, if it was a greater than 10,000 square foot wetland you could require it got it but um, but That's you could recommend I'm it to you yeah that, on that one yeah, I didn't know what you're gonna say <laughs> so on that one I think probably a recommendation okay. um, would be in, in order okay uh, unless we change our ordinance to cover everything or unless it's a vernal pool which didn't sound like it was right okay so, um, so that would be a recommendation so recommend that okay recommend what the NOFA um, requirements. Yeah, is that a? I think um, if they agree to it, you can require it, but it's not in our ordinance, so they would have to agree to it. So you can recommend it, and they can bring it back to their applicant, and hopefully by the planning board, they can have an answer that they can agree to it. Okay. okay. And we could make it a planning board stipulation if they can agree to it. Okay. So we'll word so it that way. Those are two somehow. recommendations. Yeah. But a stipulation can be that they have the planting plan included prior to going to the planning board yeah and, yep. and, and maintenance plan, plan. And, yeah are plan. we continuing with recommendations <laughs> that's a stipulation <laughs> that one can be a stipulation uh, just stipulations okay yeah, that's a stipulation. we're doing both Okay. Uh, new because I'd like more more of that grass where the grass meets the water not where they're talking about but everywhere else as well to be planted out and not a lawn because they're going to run into the same problem later I mean I know it's, it's the grades are low but well anyway I'll save this for the discussion part um, but that could be I don't know it's a recommendation that maybe they plant out all of their um, so I have the the no mowing as a recommendation yep. and NOFA as a recommendation yes. and the planting plan as a stipulation yes. with 80% yep. survival after a year. And yep. the maintenance. The, I'm assuming part of the planting plan is the maintenance. Um, well, that's the 80% survival part, I think. Yep. Okay. Yep. Just. And then? We'll, we'll call it as maintained to provide 80% survival. Yeah. So then to add your piece, recommend more no, of a more no vegetation mold, more buffer. native plantings around all of the yeah. shorelines i don't know so, so for all the way around the pond yeah kind pretty of, much yeah. get rid of the get rid of the lawn all going up to the water if it's a um, it's not, recommend conversion of shoreline from grass to native plantings yeah yeah much like what they're doing now but they could do it without putting in all this stone and the the coil the coil or the and definitely roll or not mowing they, down to the water's edge yeah if they started planting a grass that's a wetland grass and then they don't mow i went out there to take a look at the site and i had my dog with me and i didn't want him to go on the lawn yeah i don't blame you <laughs> <clears throat> And then I don't know if we need to do the stipulation about following up for a state wetland permit, or if that's just assumed. I think assumed. we get to put it in there, then it gets called out. Okay, um, so because we do, it does need to comply with whatever the state says. So we're going to need to know. Okay, so that they if they don't call them, we'll have to call them before. Well, I don't know that they have any building permits, but um, the wetland permit requires that. So. Okay. Um, we would put it in as part of the planning board approval so and so i'm going to just going to say stipulation that they contact the state and report uh, back to report back on a determination whether they need a state wetland permit yeah perfect all the roping around there i guess it's i'm assuming it's to keep the geese out because two springs ago i saw a whole lot of moms and babies like had to they were crossing the road trying to find water somewhere um uh, that doesn't seem to be in line with wetland policy, does it, of keeping, I mean, I know it's, if it's trying to, I don't know, keep the poop, the, the goose poop is washing down anyway, so, uh, and there are geese that fly in and land in there, so what's, 
what's the rationale? They just don't want to have as many geese there because they've got lawn that they want to keep green? I don't know. Anyway, well. So do we have any more stipulations or recommendations that we want to add? The I mean, well, that's what made yeah, me whether think, or oh, not. is that something, take out the stuff, but I, I, I guess. Well, it sounds like they might be anyways. Well, they'll have to take it out project. to do the work. And they won't probably. I don't know if they want to put it back because there's plants there. We would not leave that. Sorry. Does Does Brock know anything about this? He said they would not leave it. They would not leave the wire. They won't leave it there. Yeah. We will not. Okay. And around the the rest of the edge, you're probably that's out of your domain. That that was out of the scope, but we would gladly do the rest of it as well. So. To add that as a stipulation. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. Is that? If you guys want, yeah. So stipulate like that, that the stipulate remainder of the ponds. Stipulate shoreline. remove the wire. Oh, remove the wire. Or is, is that it, what you're saying? I guess. Take out the wire. Yeah. Okay. Or was it also to do the same plan all the way around the oh. pond? I have that already. Okay. If they're planting all around, they I probably, have that recommend they the be... shoreline be converted from oh, grass yeah, yeah, to native yeah, yeah. plant. Okay. I don't think you can require it at this point. Yeah. No. But you can recommend it, and then the stipulation to remove the wire. Okay. Or uh, maybe they can require. I'm trying to think if you could require the conversion of the bank. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know. Kind of a gray area. It could create a much lovelier and less. Um, yeah, they sure. might like it if they get sort of got nudged. I don't know because. Once you go more natural, a lot of times people like it better, but we'll see. We're of that mindset, so mm -hmm. we are of that mindset. So we're, I mean, we, we can absolutely advise if the nudge is made as well. So we're, we advocate for them, but we, we also want it to be able to be done. So do we need a, we need a second on that? Can I, I can I just, before you do a second? Yeah. Yeah. Ask a question. Yeah, sure. It has to do with the stipulations. Is is it possible? Would people be in favor of rec, uh, having a stipulation that they don't mow down to the water's edge? Because I think that was a recommendation. Yeah, it was. I don't know. And I can would call it a, a recommendation or a stipulation. I feel like that one could be a stipulation. I, I was don't stipulation is what I was hoping. Stipulation. Yeah. If everybody's okay with it, I'll put it in that mm -hmm. way. Or don't mow down to the water's edge. So what I have now is recommend conversion of shoreline from grass to native plantings, which would prevent mowing down to the water's edge. And that was a recommendation. But we they could don't. say at a minimum, yeah. no mowing to the water's edge. But what does that mean? That they have to allow it to naturally. But where? How many <laughs> five feet? Five feet or 10 feet? feet. Does yeah. that what you mean? Yeah. Did Barbara say five feet too? What do you think, Brock? Yeah, five feet. How many that, feet? That would be so. The yeah, our standard buffer is anywhere from six to ten feet. Um, you know, when we do O and M, any type of maintenance anywhere else, that would be in any most design constraints for a constructed wetland would be six to ten feet. I'm gonna say six to ten feet. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Six to ten, and that gives us a flexibility. Okay. Yeah. And that one's a stipulation, kind of. Yep, yeah, that's what you guys wanted. So that's going to be all part of the one Abby started, but it'll finish with that. So that'll be a recommend conversion of shoreline from grass to native plantings, shoreline buffer from grass to native plantings, which would prevent mowing down to the water's edge at a minimum. Uh, commission, rec uh, commission stipulates no mowing <clears throat> within six to 10 feet. And the planning board might do whatever they do with it, but um, I would think they would follow it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I know we're we're recommending they take a close look at the NOFA standards. Maybe we could just also remind them that there are rules about the slow release fertilizer and the amount of fertilizer. With, I mean, this is within a buffer, so just to have um, our rules, just to remind them of that that that's the minimum, and put then that we, in the staff memo. Okay. Perfect. A reference yeah. to this depu to this yeah. to this regulations.
Do you need a second or did you do it? Did you get a second? Also. Oh, did I get a second? No, not yet. Second. I second it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Abigail or Barbara. Okay. I never get to second them, so. Oh, then you should. Oh, <laughs> okay, discussion. I mean, we've already discussed a lot. Yeah. yeah. Anything I, else? Could, I just want to add, though, I mean, and the, I don't know who's benefit this, this is for, but I'm thinking, so when we met on the property, the person that we met with said that they love to landscape. Liberty Mutual does that. and. And that was really obvious. And but their idea of what is beautiful and our idea of what is beautiful are two different things. Yeah. So I feel like if we're going to put ourselves out there, this is a really good time to do it. Um, so and to, to make these stipulations because we've tried so many times with Liberty Mutual, and it, and they do like it to look pretty, and um, and that's just that you know artificial looking landscape that they like. So I think this is um, a really great opportunity. Great. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Are we ready for a vote? Okay. Uh, Lynn. Yes. Abigail. Yes. Ted. Yes. Jess. Yes. Barbara. Yes. And the chair votes yes. Okay. Great. Okay. Thanks, Brock and Heather. Thank you. Thank you. Not a problem. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. All right. So other business. Um, the first thing we have on here is discuss the 3.30 p.m. meeting time. So this was something uh, Barbara and I started talking about a little bit, just probably starting from when we didn't get a quorum and Jess had to <laughs> run down here to save the meeting. Um, and just wanted to discuss what people's thoughts were about potentially changing the meeting time. To what? Well, we don't know yet because <laughs> we don't even know what the options really are with the city and other meetings and things like that but just we're curious and also um being that the 3 30 time we think might hin does hinder some applicants to be on the commission just because it's during the work hours um but anyways we were just interested in having a discussion about it if anyone has thoughts. Yeah, that's sad. If you if you decide on a time, we can look at different days. But not knowing the time, it's harder. I mean, I I mean, again, I think it would. So, and Peter, it sounds like maybe the day possibly would change. I think too. once we figure out once you figure out what time you want, then we can talk easier about the day. But okay. the, you know, if it's yeah, because there's a lot of meetings that start at seven. Right. Um, some start at six thirty, but. Um, not as, and then some are at like 7.30 in the morning, and then some are midday, but not many. Right. You said 7.30 in the morning. The parking, traffic, and safety. Oh, that makes sense. And the trees and greenery. <laughs> oh, okay. And the economic development. Oh, I didn't even know that was yeah. happening. Well, were you suggesting in evening time? I'm not suggesting. No, no. I, I, I would prefer an evening time, um, but I, again, you know, I'm not even if it remains at 3:30. I'm I'm committed to being here. So it's just. I mean, I, don't, I, I I appreciate those points. Uh, you know, like it might afford more people to consider this commission, and you know, uh, like you, I'm committed to being here. But the 3:30 is definitely hard logistics-wise from a work and life perspective. So. I mean, yeah. For me, like maybe even an extra hour or something would be helpful if it just was closer to sort of the more typical normal day, you know. Yeah. That's but, what I was thinking too, like a four o'clock start rather than a three thirty even would Yeah, be, like four or four thirty, just something that it was it might make it a little easier for yeah, other pieces to kind of come together. Anybody I else? There's a couple of new members though, right? I wonder yeah. yeah, I think we, we actually wanna, like, are gonna be consult them. Meeting. Well, right that's now. part of the problem too is we've just had vacancies yeah, yeah. so um on that note is mika because i was i had when we were doing the minutes um and barbara mentioned is mika not an because i thought she was going to be full she resigned 
And and she was that's what I thought. So she okay because having her as an alternate, I was like, wait a minute, I thought she was made of foam. And then so yeah. I didn't know. That. Okay, they, so she has to move both she and her husband. Right. So they're going through this process of having to move. I guess on an ex soon. Uh, something's happening to their existing building that they're renting. So, yeah. Um, and then you ran into somebody who was interested, in, but that was not Mika that you guys were talking about. Somebody else who wanted maybe back on the to join. Oh yeah, that was oh. a former member. Yeah, of the commission. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, and the two new people are then are they full time? Are they full? Um, let's see. One, two. There's a so Mika's spot was a regular. Yeah, it was because she started as an alternate and then became. Yeah, and then, and then, and then so there's talk. one regular and one alternate okay. uh, on the next city council agenda. Okay. So then, do we have? Are we completely full? Or yes, no, we. I believe that fills up all the okay. slots. Great. Yeah. Okay. I feel like we should wait till they join before we yeah. make any changes. Yeah. Because yeah. you know? maybe they. Yeah, they just got here and then all of a sudden, yeah. I mean. And they might have a preference for this time. I've also heard yeah. Yeah. folks right. have a preference for this because you're not missing bedtime with your kids or whatever. Like, yeah. it might be the opposite opinion. Sure. Well, I love the time, but partly is for decades. I went to so many evening meetings, I can't stand. Yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> I understand that too. Yeah. And we would be dragging come like if this were like a seven to nine meeting. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think it would be different. <laughs> I know well, there's pros and cons. I think to we can look at um, if you want us to look at where the calendar for the next meeting would be but if you're looking in the afternoon I think you're okay until you know if you started at 430 you'd probably be okay the only problem is HDC sometimes would be a conflict in here because it'll tighten up how much time you have but like a meeting like today I know you know you're fine yeah. because it's not two hours but um, and you could limit it to two hours if you wanted to do that and then with a backup for a meeting and we could even hold the room for a backup meeting the following week um, at the same something time. like that if you're going to go later in the day and you're bumping up against another meeting you could just automatically put a backup meeting in um, every month so that we know something like that but if you want to go in the evening then you have to decide whether it's Wednesday will work and what I don't know if the second Wednesday will work because HDC a lot of times has a second Wednesday too um, yeah I mean I, be the I'd also time. prefer that we just get it all done in one meeting yeah yeah me too is having and a, and try to plan you. a right. second one is annoying, so I, I guess then starting earlier affords us that ability to do it. And then if we change the meeting time, would that also change the site walk probably. plan that just got created? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> well, we'll, we can still try to do them a week before the meeting. One of the things that we realize on that site walk is that we don't even have the applications out to you guys yet. We've just received them. Yeah. So we'll have to figure out a way to give you at least some information. Usually, a lot of applicants will bring a plan, and that usually covers it. So we'll just have, we didn't think about that this time, but we'll try to try to think about that for future ones. But and yeah, we'll have to talk dark about that sooner too. Oh, so. yeah. yeah, that's why we stayed with three thirty, just because yeah. it gets dark right. so early. Okay. I love the having a standing time though for the site walks. I think that's a great way to do it, and then we can plan around it and. Yeah, and, and we're hoping it encourages more site walks because it's always yeah. helpful to get out there and see it. Yeah. I suggest let's get our new members and, you know, get their input too when they come yeah. on board. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we'll check in with Allison too. Yeah. All right, so we'll leave that for now. Well, she has her six o'clock meeting. I know. I know. Yeah. Everyone. It's at seven. But, yeah. Oh, seven. Oh, yeah. I she, did think about that too. Then she does something at six, and then she's going to. Say, I don't know. <laughs> she might, like, oh but I God. know we are both on a seven o'clock Zoom meeting every Wednesday as well. So, <laughs> well, that was the other thing too, is we talked to the mayor about the fact that to have a quorum you have to be in person, and he was like, "Well, that's that's a state level state thing." Law. And I think he was, I don't know. He said he might look into it, but I don't know, yeah. because that would be helpful too for when. We can't get a quorum in person. We don't have people having to like run down, and we can still the meeting can still go on even if it's got people remotely. But I don't know if that's a pie in the sky thing. Yeah, people have asked the legislature, but that's the law right now. Okay. All right. Uh, the next thing is the wetland boundary marker sign draft. Which Kate, do you want to speak to this one? I think that 
you guys should all have them in front of you, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm not going to pull it up here. Yep. So I, I handed out two copies, well, not two copies, but there's two versions now um, that the Adrian nameplates is the company that we're working with. So they gave us two proofs. Um, the first one they gave us looked a little crowded, so we asked them to sort of um, switch up the wording. So this this is the one they just recently right, gave us yesterday. I'll see if I have. They moved the city of Portsmouth. There you go. That's, there's the first one. Yeah. Oh, no. Sorry. Oh, no, that's, that's the second, second one. one. Yeah. Sorry. So they moved the city of Portsmouth wording oh, on oh, top just so it was a little less crowded at the bottom. But this is sort of the sketch we kind of talked through at the last meeting. So if there's anything we want to change or add, we can still do it now before we put in an order. We decided that we're going to order 250 signs to start just as a big bulk order and to save some money. So this is what we're working with. If you guys have any ideas or if you like it or if you want to change the phrases or the logo, we can do that. We can't really add too much more because they're concerned with it getting too busy, but I think that's what we decided on for the wording at least. What's the material going to be? Tin, I think, is what it was, stamped metal. I like it. Yes, and I like that one with the city of Portsmouth above. I agree. The first version it's looks crowded. a little crowded on the yeah. bottom. Yeah, I agree too. Yeah. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. You end up not reading as much of it when you have the three ones. Mm -hmm. but do we do we need the city of Portsmouth and the Conservation Commission on there? Because I have to say, it, it kind of makes it look like it's it's publicly you know city owned land versus this is just going on somebody's property, right? It's a good, oh, point. Um, good point. I mean, I'd be fine with no city of Portsmouth and no Conservation Commission, like the because the other two messages to me are more important. Yeah, Peter and I were talking about Portsmouth Conservation Commission, but. I can't remember. I mean, it's not like we weren't really feeling that either. Well, that is a good point in terms of the the uh, what you're conveying. Yeah. Right. Sometimes it says per the oh. regulatory body on some signs. You see mm -hmm. per. Like per city, city of Portsmouth. Portsmouth. But it still would be confusing, I guess. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, we could remove both Portsmouth and Conservation Commission. I don't know. Um, hmm. Or. Yeah, one or the other. I mean, or well, I mean, keeping it nice and clean and simple, I think, is. I mean, it's going to be pretty small. I don't know. Yeah, we would clean it up too if we took out those two lines. Would you make protected wetland area the same, or bigger? I guess. You could make that as big as do not disturb. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would be in support of that too. I don't. Yeah. Okay. I didn't think of that, Lynn, with the city of Portsmouth, <laughs> like. We don't own it, but like yeah. it makes sense now that you say it. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, it's really just a regulation. It's not about ownership. So, and really, the message is do not disturb or cut. So you could, right. you could uh, reverse the Conservation Commission and protected wetland area, say protected wetland area, and then Conservation Commission down below. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> or do we want to? I like the idea of having it bigger, sort of protected of wetland area, because it kind of emphasizes why you're not supposed to disturb or cut. I don't know. Yep. Does that make? Yeah. yeah. So get, but would you get rid of the city of Portsmouth and the conservation commission area parts? Yeah. That, uh, and then just make protected wetland areas as big as can be, just although that make sure there's still like a space then between the do not disturb or cut. Okay, hey, did you, um, when you talked to Exeter, did you see their signs? Do they, what do they have on there? I didn't see their signs, but that's a good point. Uh, one have. we saw was a different municipality. It was in Massachusetts, but it had the town's name on it. But was that for their protected areas or was it, because that's a, we didn't uh, really. Ra yeah, Row Rowley, Massachusetts had, I think, protected wetland area. And then there was one called the town, it said something on the bottom that said town of Southington. Um, and then it stated what department. I think it was their public works department. So there's a couple ways. Some people have like absolutely nothing that states their town or anything like that and just has the phrase do not disturb or cut or protected so and so. So um, I think people go either way, but it is, I think it's nicer to have it more simplified. Maybe we don't need the city of Portsmouth Conservation what, Commission. What if you it. did, um, took out city of? and put Portsmouth, sort of like what Ted was talking about, but just Portsmouth protected wetland area. 
or something. I don't know if it would fit. Mm. And it could be a little bit bigger. Yeah, it should probably fit um, if you took out Conservation Commission. Not that I don't want you. But um, you could just have Portsmouth Protected Wetland Area, because then it's not like City of Portsmouth, but it's the mm -hmm. location. And if you want that recognition, um, I don't know. Any, if anybody. Uh, my, my, so if someone saw this sign, say it's a new property owner, so say a previous property owner put those up because they had a application, and now it's a new owner. And they're like, okay, well, what can I, what can I do in this area? And, but there's nothing on the thing that says like who to talk to or see. Mm -hmm. I don't. That's why I thought the conservation commission maybe would be good on there. Oh, yeah. okay. Then they know yeah. to like, okay, this is who I have to talk to to figure out what the rules are. Yep. Got it. Sometimes you see like, uh, you know, like the the number that goes with the ordinance. Oh, like the, the RSA. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. I mean, that would at least tell them where to go try to find something, but I don't know if that's what we, I don't know. No, that makes sense. I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. You can go back and forth a zillion times, bro. Oh. Who picked the red-winged blackbird? Is that you, Kate? Sorry? Who picked the red-winged blackbird? I think they picked that. Oh, I was curious. <laughs> <laughs> We, we showed them one that was similar. Yeah, Got we showed it. them one we liked. And mm. They picked whatever fit. I like it though. I mean, I mean we get settled on it. Yeah. What if we just got rid of City of Portsmouth and just kept the Conservation Commission? I mean, people would know we're in Portsmouth <clears throat> and that it was. I, I agree with that. I just reverse Conservation Commission and protected wetland area. So okay. it says protected wetland area and then it says conservation. Yeah, because Conservation below. Commission doesn't need to be that big. Yeah, yeah, yeah and it can just yeah, be yeah. smaller, you know, and yeah. the protected wetland area could be a little bit larger because yeah. that's the most important aspect. Okay. Yeah, it's probably nice to leave leave the commissions in there a little bit, and that they know who to contact. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They have to answer so we want just make it smaller. Yeah, we want conservation commission on the outside bottom. Yeah. 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 No. And make it smaller. Okay. And then get yeah. rid of city of Portsmouth. Yeah, make okay. protective wetland area the a little bit larger. A little bit bigger. Okay. And reduce the conservation commission size. That'll work. Do we want to put the RS or the the number of the ordinance or? Oh. Is that too much? We could put so. contact conservation commission, but oh, yeah, yeah, but I, I don't know that you need no. to. I think it's I pretty think obvious. They would know. It would yeah. take a lot more space. <laughs> it's hard to figure more on proof of the world, though. I know. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, thanks, Kate. Okay. Thanks, yeah, no problem. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I had one other thing in other business, but before I say that, does anyone else have anything? I have one other thing. Too. You want to go first? Do you want? Oh, go ahead. Go. You go. Okay. Well, just to get back, Ted had asked about, you know, at, at the last um, uh, sustainable lawn care or sustainable land well, care subcommittee, subcommittee um, we had talked about, you know, working on some web and web content. And I talked to Public Works and the webmaster, and there shouldn't be any issue. It depends on whether we're adding web content to our site or whether we're linking to another site. Either way, we should be able to figure it out. So I think go ahead with it. Oh, good. Um, Get we'll, going. I talked to Corin at Public Works, and they do, you know, organic land care. He'd be happy to talk to the commission about what they do, or have Max, um, who also works with him, talk to us. Um, and he said he, they could also talk to us about the tree planting effort they have going on. 400 trees for Portsmouth, 400. So. Oh, it's impressive. And yeah. if you look at some of the trees that they're getting, you know, like yeah. flowering dogwoods. Nice trees, like yeah. That. Nice yeah. trees. You know. Yeah. Not cheap ones. And the, the way they're planting them in this bare root style, they're a lot cheaper, but they're able to plant them and have them survive really well. So at least that's the thought. Those guys know their stuff. Yeah, they know what they're doing. They're all NOFA certified, by the way. There's four of them. Nice. <laughs> um, I did have another. Sure, go ahead. Um, did any of us want to sign on to Ted's, um, seeing them in the minutes reminded me, his. Um, with CIPs or whatever, um, did, or are we just leaving that as he's doing that, or did as a conservation commission, did anybody want to, uh, do we want to endorse that or not? I'm well, just kind of curious. Barbara's speaking at yeah. something, right? 
Yeah, well, we've got one. We proposed, the commission proposed half a million dollars, you know, for land conservation. And my plan was a year ago we proposed a million, you know, um, but it didn't make it through the process. But it, it, as a citizen, you know, you could submit requests. We didn't have really a chance, and I, I would recommend that next year we have a, a broader conversation about the CIP and things that we as a commission might want to recommend, you know, because there are a lot of things that you can recommend. So I had four that came up, one from my uh, discussions with Peter Rice about a, a deep time aerator that, that, you know, I was telling him, you, you don't aerate the grounds hard as a rock in any of our parks. And he said it's a question of resources and re recommended that, you know, if, if we could get a grant or something like that, I said, well, well maybe he didn't have the money in his operating budget. So that was one. Uh, there's one about trying to put away, I said, 1% of the budget based upon what they do in Massachusetts. They have 188 communities out of 351 in Massachusetts participate in the same program. You can set aside either 1% or 2% of your property taxes in one year, and then it, it goes into a fund. You know, so you raise it once, but that's it. And the money goes into a fund for recreation, for historic uh, preservation, uh, or land conservation. You could use it for any of those things. So it's put a lot of effort into it, you know. And so the other thing is they have, in, they have them all over Europe, and they've got a little one in Dover. Uh, it's a steam machine to kill the weeds, you know, on the brick sidewalks and everything. They have some that are, you know, really fancy, you know. So I would recommend that next year we have a broader discussion uh, at the beginning of the CIP process because I'm sure we all have ideas. Wow, that'd be really good if the city did that, you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it might be a little late this year, but it yeah. makes mm -hmm. sense to do it if you start early. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going to go there. I'll go to the planning board and go to the council and say, you know, please support this or write them or I'll do something. Sure. Sure. Um, the last thing I have is at the last organic land care subcommittee meeting, I was just working on ordinance changes, just very broad ordinance changes for what we have purview over. Um, and I, I didn't get a chance to send it out to everyone to look at. Oh, did I send it? How did you get it? Maybe. Did I send it to you? <laughs> <laughs> I think I got it at the last meeting was oh it yeah Kate printed it out yeah, for some Kate people yeah some okay people anyways um, that wasn't the place where we were going to discuss it so I was wondering if we wanted to create a subcommittee to discuss that if anyone was interested in looking at those or at least had ideas and wanted to send them to me to kind of put in and go from there I don't know do you want to talk about how that would kind of go forward yeah, so that I mean if you set up a subcommittee you could come up with some recommendations I think um, you don't necessarily have to flesh them out completely so they're ordinances, mm -hmm. but really it's the concepts you want. Okay. And so if the commission wanted to look at what we have in our ordinance and how we'd like the ordinance to be changed, the process would be to go to the land use committee that is a council and staff from planning department and I think a couple other members um, that would then talk about it. You, you kind of want to get the city council support at the beginning mm. because they're the ones who are going to, at the end, adopt it. So if they get the council support through that process, I think it would it would probably either go there or then, then go to the city council. And then if they recommend developing an ordinance, then the ordinance would be written by the planning department or some with, with some assistance possibly even from a contractor, um, depending on how far along it is. Mm -hmm. And then that would go back to either the land use committee and then the planning board or right to the planning board who would review it and then they make a recommendation to the city council. So it's kind of a long process, but um, it really starts with what ideas do you have in mind? Because the planning board and this land use committee won't know how to change the conservation commission. So if you said to them, we'd like to create a 150 foot buffer or whatever the example might be, it doesn't have to be in this section of the ordinance we wanted to read this way as much as what's the idea, you know? Okay. So it's not as much the nitty gritty of developing the ordinance, it's let's take a bigger picture, step back and look at our ordinance. What do we think we should what do you protect? want the result to you know, be? We have a 25 foot no cut buffer, we have a 100 foot buffer, yeah. we like that, we have exemptions for this, and we have 
yeah. you know, septic rules, different things that all could be considered. Yeah. Um, and then in the land use committee review process and in the development of the ordinance, they look at what's allowed by statute and that kind of thing. And, and you know, what a lot of the way wetlands regulations seem to work in the state is under innovative land use controls at the state level. And that basically says that you can adopt wetland regulations stricter than the state, but not less strict. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's pretty wide open, I think, in terms of wetlands. If you want to take it out into wildlife and things like that, then you'd have to probably do a little research on what would be permitted and what wouldn't, but there's probably things you could do there too. Okay. Does it have to be a subcommittee thing? And if so, how many conservation commission members have to be involved to be considered a subcommittee? I think one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it could be people outside the conservation commission too, but um, or it could be a committee of the whole. So it's it's really up to you guys. I don't think. I suppose it'd be better if you had a few members. If one member just has recommendations and they want to run them by other members, mm -hmm. that would be sort of them. You know, oh, like, like Sam took the initiative already. If she has ideas, she wants to run by us. If they're if they're vetted and complete, then we could send it. The commission could send a memo to the land use committee and say this is what we have been working on. How do we bring this to you? Kind of thing. But I can't email. I, I get so confused with quorum and like the F rules. Yeah. yeah. So like, so we should. Can I email out my draft to everyone and ask for them to comment back? That's where I. I think if you want comments back, that's yeah. where the subcommittee comes in. So we yeah. set up a meeting because you don't probably don't have time to do it at a conservation commission meeting. Although, you know, you could try to discuss those edits. To discuss people, the edits because okay. you can't really do that by email. Right. That's kind of conducting business. That's <laughs> conducting business. So okay. you need to set up a way to conduct business, whether it's at a regular meeting or a, a, a special meeting, which doesn't have to be a subcommittee. It could just be a special meeting that we set up for you. Okay. It just has to be advertised so that people know there's a meeting. Do people have to be here in person for the actual meeting? <laughs> <laughs> or uh, can it be everyone be on Zoom? Um, that's a good question. I don't know. I'll, I'd have it to, would be helpful if it didn't have to be an actual. So you want to just have again. a remote meeting to talk about? That, that. would be great. I think. Okay. At least for me. Um, I know. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know I what the end. statutory, if it's only things that are spelled out in statute that need to have forums in public, or if it's any public body. So okay. that's what I gotta look at. Okay. Because if we're just like throwing ideas around, because if you said we don't have to have full fleshed out statutes and we're just throwing ideas around, yeah. and kind of. Figuring out which ones we want to pursue, right? Then, what are the rules on that? <laughs> and can we do it over Zoom <laughs> for everybody? I will look into that. And yes, Barbara. <laughs> I just was going to say I totally support either a special meeting or a subcommittee. Either way, okay. I, think I mine keeps breaking up, so it might might have to get off. So. Oh, that's all I have, so good. I'm done. Is the sustainable MK group getting together again? How did we leave? I missed the last meeting. Uh, when was that to... next meeting? Is that the end of the month? Is that when they usually meet? The 20. Kate, do you remember the date of the sustainable land care meeting next meeting? The last Wednesday. The thirtieth, the thirtieth is the last Wednesday. If this is November, is that November? Yeah. Is it the last Wednesday then? Is it the thirtieth? It's always the last Wednesday. All right. Well, that's right before Thanksgiving. That's right mm -hmm. after. That's right. Oh, that's after. right. Thirty is the week after. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest. In two weeks, get cranking on on uh, language and start to fill in the website and stuff like that. There's not that much to talk about till we have real content, you know. So Will you tell me, and I'll, we can send out an announcement yeah. when to have the next yeah. one? When we get some content and stuff like that, then we can maybe postpone to December or yeah. Yeah. January. Or the maybe. New Year. Yeah. yeah, maybe the New Year. Yeah, it's going to be January because December is going to be no. going to be New Year's. Right. So not on the thirtieth. Is that what no? It sounds like not on the thirtieth, and maybe not in December. Hi. Hi. I I just wanted to know if I could introduce up on the cemetery committee. I just want you to if you want to talk in the regular meeting, would you please come up so just right, well, introduce yourself? Yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry, <laughs> we didn't. 
Give it a shot. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. No, my name is Susan Sterry, and I'm co-chair of the Historic Cemetery Committee, which I don't know if you're all familiar. We've been in process now for a year. A big learning curve. Um, we just got our first grant, which entails repairing, I call it the sea wall. It's retaining wall at Union and North Cemetery, uh, which, you know, goes up against North Mill Pond. So Peter was kind enough to tell me part of the permitting process probably would be, you know, going, presenting to the Conservation Commission. Not me, but part of it. So I just wanted to introduce the committee. Um, we that's our first grant yay and so um, th there's two parts to that and then there'll be another one we're investigating what's going on at point of graves um, the stone wall down there um, the city council had asked us to look into it because they have a very active friends of south end um, so uh, right now um, we are going to have testing done, and Peter Rice is taking care of all of that. So hopefully, you know, we'll be able to rebuild a wall down there, and that too would come in front of you, you know, eventually. So I came today because I wanted to see how, like I said, 101 learning of the city government, <laughs> um, how, how you guys operate and the procedures and all of that. So, and again, introduce us. So, and we have the same problem. We ended up 4 o'clock on the second, uh, the first Thursday of every month, and that seemed to fit in with everybody on the committee getting there and stuff like that. So, and we have the same questions about Zoom too, which we got the same answers that hopefully going forward, the state will change their their outlook on, you know, to get your quorums, because lots of times we don't have quorum either. But that's more than what I came here to tell you. So um, again, I just wanted to introduce and let you know. Hopefully, you'll see us at least three times anyway. So thank you, thank, thank you. you. That's we well, really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. have a good. Everyone was like oh, you. And yeah. just just to sort of put it out there. I mean, you know, you we do work sessions with with folks, which yep. is like kind of like a pre-application thing where we could kind of or even a site walk. Right. Um, like I don't know. You might consider kind of tapping us early in the process. If we well, get helpful. absolutely. Suzanne Woodlands are. Uh, as our liaison, and we haven't gotten that far yet. I, you know, as I said, we were learning, and it, thanks to Peter, because I was talking to him about Point of Graves, said eventually, if we get the money, then we this would be part of the permitting. So we won't know. Technically, we won't be accepted until January. So after that, I guess then the process. Suzanne will let us know how the process goes, or Peter, because I think it goes to Peter Rice at that point. So, um, but thank you for sharing that, because yeah. I, I sort of gathered that. And so. I think, and seawalls are tricky. Yeah. Like the rules have kind of changed a little bit, and they're, you know, yeah. they're, gonna, they're gonna be expected to do sort of a nature-based kind of thing, and it, I told you that out in the field. We could yeah, the, the first part, the first part is replace, uh, not replacing, is repairing a stone wall that already exists. It's the second part that's gonna, be trickier because there's also erosion involved from runoff from the railroad and the salt pot, not salt pile, but and, Mahoney's and, and, and things like that. Remains. So, yeah. Yeah. people. Right. So, um, so, and that's going to be yeah. way more difficult because there may actually be issues about how far back the cemetery actually went and there's erosion there already. So, it could get really complicated, as I found out. Um, about other projects, so. But I just wanted to sort of meet you all, you know, know who you, you are, and you can know when you hear Cemetery Committee who we are, so. Yeah, thank, you. Great. Great. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, are we ready to adjourn? Can you stay a minute? Oh, meeting's adjourned. Can you stay a minute till they adjourn the meeting? Oh, sure. Because I wanted to ask you something. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah. Meeting's adjourned. <laughs> Excellent, well done, Sam. Some things are